this is PR Frank, and today we're going to talk about selection techniques. In Photoshop, all of the images are made of pixels, and that's the main point, is to be able to select things well. So if you look at this lesson as a detailed explanation of how to select things, you should be pretty successful in doing what you want to do in Photoshop. One last piece of art we'll do here is use this car to review two more selection techniques. One underneath the rectangular marquee tool is the elliptical marquee tool. And what we'll do is we'll recolor these rims. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here so I can really see that those, those rims closely. And if I start here in the center and first of all, let's set feathering to zero. We don't want any feathering. Let me click and drag outward. And you'll notice that it doesn't make a perfect circle. If you want to make a perfect circle, you can hold down shift. Okay. The other thing we want to do is we want to start from the center and drag outward. Well, we're going to add the alt key to do that. So now I'm moving from the center outward and I'm getting a perfect circle that's growing from the inside out because I'm holding down both alt and shift. Now you'll notice it doesn't quite align with the hubcap as I make my way out. Now I'm going to add a third key. I'm going to add the space bar. And what the space bar allows me to do is move that selection as it is around where I want it to be. And I can place it exactly where I need it. Okay, and once I have that selection, then I can do a number of things with it. Let me add a new layer, and I'm going to call that layer front tire. Then I could take my brush tool and pick any color I want. Let's go with this currently selected blue color here. And because I have a selection, I can paint on that selection and it won't go outside of my current selection. Okay, I'm also not destroying the original pixels because I'm on a new layer. As you can see, I can turn on and off the visibility and my original layer is still there. Okay, and if I want to see the detail of the original layer, I can once again change my blend mode to something that works. And I think color burn looks really nice to give him a really nice set of blue rims. All right, so let's repeat this technique with the second tire. That's just that layer. If I turn off my original background layer, all I have is two circles. So it does a really nice job of letting you isolate things. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is get the color of this car to match the rims or the wheels. And it's really challenging to select something like the body of this car because it's, it's a unique shape. So one of the things that Photoshoppers do is they come all the way down here and they use the pen tool. Now, if you've not used the pen tool before, it may take a lot of practice. Here's how the pen tool works. I click somewhere along the area where I want to begin selecting. And then as I move my pen tool along, I'm not clicking yet, I come to a place where there's a curve. So right here, from here to here, there's a curve. So I'm going to click and I'm going to hold and I'm going to drag and you'll notice these handles come out and these handles are controlling that curve of that line. And then I can continue coming down here, click and hold and drag. And once again, it makes the curve right where I want it. Now what's going to happen is I have a pretty dramatic angle going on here. And if I were to click and drag down here, I, I'm not going to be able to get that exact curve because it's too much of a dramatic angle. Okay, so let me just undo that. And I have to get rid of the, the forward handle by alt clicking right here at the anchor point. This square is called the anchor point. So I click that, it gets rid of that handle and now allows me to make whatever curve I need to. So I'm going to make a curve that follows the lens of this light straight on down to the bumper. 
And once again, I need to curve again. The further you zoom in on this, the more success you'll have. I'll alt click the anchor, make a couple of clicks here. Every time I have a curve, I'm gonna have to click and drag, click and drag, click, click, click and drag. Down here, I wanna follow this curve. I wanna get rid of my handle. So I think I can come all the way down to here and click and drag to get that curve. That's pretty good. Click, alt click on my anchor, click. Click a line straight across. I've got a curve here. Click and drag, click on the anchor. And I just continue all the way around the shape of the body of this car. Sometimes I have to click and drag. Sometimes I just have to click. So I'll finish doing using the pen tool to follow the shape of the body of this car all the way around. back to where I started you'll notice when I hover the place I started my pen tool gets a little circle next to it and that means I'm gonna have a closed path and that's a good thing to have a closed path because then I can make a complete closed selection out of it so once I have selected what I want using my pen tool I can come over to my paths panel and there's the path I created and down here at the bottom, there are several choices to be made with that path, and I'm going to choose to make a selection out of it. And as you can see, it made a selection using the path that I did, and it's very accurate because I'm skilled at the pen tool. And it may be challenging for you, but I uh, encourage you to use the pen tool a lot because it is very powerful in both this application and in other applications such as Adobe Illustrator. So now that I have my selection, I can do what I've done with other selections and create an adjustment layer for a solid color of the same color. And I'll say, okay. And I'll use that same blending mode. How about color burn? And it makes a really nice dark blue color for the car that matches the wheels. Now, as you can see, the lenses of the lights, they don't really match. Uh, and there are ways to subtract your selection from there, but it's also just as easy to come in on the mask and to get your brush. And what you can do with the brush on a mask is you can take black and paint to hide parts of the mask. Notice what I'm doing, I'm painting with black on a mask and I can also paint black over here to get that lens back. If I mess up, I can switch it back to white and paint back what I need. I think I'll go ahead and get this little reflector down here as well. So it's not that same color. And on this side as well. So um, I could also mess with the door handle if I needed to, but uh, let's just keep it as it is. I hope that all of those selection techniques will be helpful to you as you move forward and learn to use Photoshop. It's all about the selections. <laughs>